Goku decided to show up. Come on. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Where you been? I've been here. I've been around. I've been busy. I've been moving and grooving. What, what about you? Not here. Today, was, Listen, today was busy. I'm tired. I almost did this from my bed, honestly. Then I was like, I got to get the people what they want. Got to throw the hat on. Got to throw a shirt on. Okay, okay. I mean, no, I feel you. But here, here's the thing, though, Michaela. I, I need you to hear me on this. Hear me. <laughs> I want to hear you. Hear me on this because I'm going to have to step my game up if you keep stepping <laughs> up this fly. Like, what's, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm looking a little something, but just... look, Shutter's on. Hey, Shutter. Yeah, dope. Look, I, you know, I don't have any other, I don't have any other excuse to dress up, but for you and this crew. So, look, if I have to put all those eggs in one basket, here you got it. <laughs> hey, this sounds, it sounds good. It looks great. So, you know. so shut, thank you. So shut this on. And I think we need to Instagram going to have to figure out a way to do like multiple cameras because who better to chime in on the stuff that we talk about than shut. Like, Jets, come on. You already know. Yeah. Shut is wild. I don't so, even getting into the night. But hold up, Michaela, how, how, you, how you get your arms like that? Because you know what I'm saying? I've been, I've been well, smacking. You know, my, my arms are, are so my much smaller, smaller than normal. I haven't been working out nearly as much as I should in this COVID. And hey, Taylor. Oh, it's <laughs> thank y'all. Um, look, my arms are going down because I haven't been doing as many classes. So I gotta get, I gotta step my game up so I don't come back to the gym looking all, you know. Mm. I was doing, I was doing my biceps today, and I was just like feeling so weak. I was like, this, this, this got to get better. I taught my first body pump class today, and it just felt so good. I was just like, you know what? This is it. So I'll be teaching body pump um, every week, so I'll get my life together. All right. We have some people joining on. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to Live, Laugh, and Exercise. Uh, I'm Michaela, and my wonderful co-host. Go ahead. Introduce yourself. Everett Shipman. Yes, shit, man. <laughs> so we started this show last week, and really we wanted to broadcast to everyone sort of the conversations that we would have in a small group with each other. And um, the basis is topics of lifestyle or living, topics of laughter, some you know funny things or funny nuances, and then exercise, of course. Um, both of us are personal trainers. Both of us have been, been in the industry for a while, and I would say fitness is our passion. So um, here's how this works. We have some questions that we will throw out each other. Um, we will answer, but we really want engagement from you guys. So if something that we say sparks a comment or a question, go ahead and type it in. If you just came in with your own question, concern, topic, chime in and we'll we'll discuss that okay so everett we're talking live laugh and exercise do you have any topics that you want to start with well you know as a uh as a as a business guy and as you being a fellow entrepreneur i <laughs> thought it would be interesting to hear your story okay putting you a little bit in front and center Hear your story about how you how you came about with the whole P spot, how that came to be, how you know what 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 area or stage of life were you in before it happened? How did you get it started? What's your story behind that? That is all. Thank you, first of all. Um, that's like very near and dear to my heart because like the P spot is pretty much where. You know, I made my bones, so to speak. So one of my clients I, was always there. Huh? Because one of my clients used to always be there and talk about it. Look, I literally two or three times a week do I still run into people, different people that used to go to the peace spot, and it really touches me that you know we were able, like that reach is so deep, and so it, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, so I founded the peace spot in two thousand six, and so just to give you, I'm sorry. 
So explain to them what the peace spot is. So it's funny because it was a pole studio. People would like to scandalize that name, but it actually comes from a really innocent place. So first of all, around that time, 2006, that's when Girlfriends was popping. You guys remember Girlfriends? Yeah. And remember in Girlfriends, Jones spot was the J spot. You guys remember that? Yeah. All right. So when I started, you know, coming up with ideas for my company. I try to think like what, you know, it's so common to be like the M spot, but that don't sound sexy. That's nothing. And so my mom's name is Patricia and she passed away when I was 11. And I feel like I like literally any type of swag, any type of anything that I have, like it comes from her. Like I just feel that way. So I was like, oh, Patricia, the P spot. And yes, it's like provocative enough to make people want to ask the question. But then, you know, it's, it, it was, it just kind of, it felt right to me. So I named my spot the Peace Spot. And it just so happened that it was a pole studio and things like that. And I could kind of remix that P initial. But that's actually where that name come from. It came from the girlfriend show <laughs> and my mom's initial. <laughs> so around that time, I had I graduated from Georgetown in 2003. And um, I was struggling. To tell, you, to, to tell you the truth, I was struggling. I was struggling on two different levels. The first level was physically, fitness-wise. So you got to imagine, I was a part of a Division I field hockey program, which means organized practices year-round. Whether we were in-season, out-season, we had trainers, we had organized exercise. And I also was young. <laughs> so between all of that, I never had to think about a fitness regimen. I just would show up and get it. Okay, fast forward to 2003. So my season is a fall season. That means we end in 2002. So fast forward to 2003, where my eating habits have totally kept up, <laughs> but my fitness habits have severely decreased because I don't have that organized fitness. So come graduation time, yeah, I still thought I was fly, but all my fat genes, quote unquote fat genes started coming out. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. So my mom's side, they are hip and thigh heavy. <laughs> and I say that with love because I love my hips and thighs, but they heavy on that side. My dad's side, are bust and stomach heavy. I mean, they have phenomenal legs, but busted. So I saw both of my competing genes coming out. I was like, black cow, black cow, black <laughs> And not in like a good way, right? So I was struggling with that. And so half of my journey into the gym came from, I need a free gym membership because I'm not making that much money to be paying some expensive gym membership. I need a gym membership and I need it hopefully free. And how can I do that? Okay, so that's one that's one avenue. The second avenue was an academic struggle I was having. So for me, I, I couldn't understand what I was good at yet. I knew that I was phenomenal at school. I knew I could get good grades. I knew that I could write nice papers. I knew that I could pitch myself. I knew all these things. Yeah, I'm good at field talking. Yes, I'm a dancer. Da, 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 da. But because I didn't I wasn't on a voc vocational track at that point. I couldn't convert my success in school to a career. I didn't know what my next move was. So right out of college, I worked for like Georgetown, like financial aid. Then I was a coach here and there. And so I was struggling to figure out what I was good, good at. Fast forward, I wind up walking into um, a local gym who was just opening up. They had, they had no trainers. They were literally putting uh, equipment together. I walked in pitch myself with no certifications, no nothing. And that manager hired me just off my personality. Um, thankfully, that situation was God sent because I was able to, to get a lot of my beginning certifications at that gym under the guidance of that gym manager. I also was able to become a jack of all trades at that gym. So that gym really promoted this thing about tra floor trainers being trained to be group exercise instructors because they understood that our industry is a little flaky and sometimes a group ex instructor won't show up <laughs> for no reason. And so they wanted that floor trainer to be able to jump right in and have members still happy. So under that gym umbrella, I was able to get paid to be group X certified. I was paid to do all this stuff. Okay. So, okay. I'm rolling two, three years in the gym. I become a master trainer. I have tons of clients. 
I'm still working a full-time job, but I'm like trying to figure out a way to get to the gym full-time. And I do that. So now it's like, okay, how I'm making the gym a lot of money doing some real specialty stuff, creating dance fitness programs and doing some things out the box. How do I flip this into something that's more lucrative for me? Around the same time, pole dancing kind of became socially acceptable. And that's because um, Oprah, Oprah's friend, girlfriend or something, she had trained Demi Moore for striptease. That was that movie at the time. Okay. And Oprah invited this lady onto her show and like brought a pole and everything. And once Oprah put her stamp of approval on it, everybody was like, oh, pole dancing is the place to be, including me. But there was nothing in D.C. that was offering. The closest place was like deep Maryland. So I saw that as an opportunity. Um, I think I bought a house around that time. I get if I bought it specifically for that or not so long ago. But I pretty much was like, I'm going to do a Paul studio. That's going to be my thing. One, because I want to do it myself. Two, I think it's flat. So I converted the whole first floor of my house at the time into a Paul studio. And... Um, Fortunately, it took off. Word of, I mean, it was good old grassroots uh, company building. It was make an impression on one person, on two people, on three person. Have make such an impression they go out, they tell a friend, they come back, they bring a friend. It was straight word of mouth for the first year or two, and then after a year or two, it really started to take on the newspapers and TV. People like would start to kind of catch on, and for a long time, the P Spot was the only studio. Um, doing the stuff that we were that we were doing, and so that's kind of. I mean, I'm not going to give you the whole life story of the peace spot, but that's how it was birthed. It was birthed out of a need for me to figure out like what the hell I was good at, and a need, and for vain reasons, a need for me to like work out. So right. that's a long answer, but that's how it came about. Oh no, that was that was super fascinating. I, you know, I always love hearing you know stories that that talk about how people came to be. You know, because everybody's uh, story is definitely you know definitely different. Now I know you've got some uh, some wild stories coming out of there, but look, listen, look, it's a secret society. All we ask is trust. You know that lyric, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a secret society. All we ask is trust. Don't be asking me about I'm not, what was going on in the peace spot, right? Terror on here. Terror like, don't you tell them what happened at the peace spot. I was just about to say, I'm not going to mess with you. I'm not going to ask anything along that line. <laughs> but um, no, peace spot, I would always see it because that was, uh, my church was like right there, right? Uh, Rhode Island. Great Amount Cal- you went to Great Amount Calvary? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And uh, haven't been in a while, but uh, you know that was <laughs> definitely my <laughs> that was definitely uh, my place to be. And I would always see the peace spot, and you know, come you know, coming out of the holies of holies, and then you know, coming out and seeing the peace spot, I was like, there was a whole bunch of people from Great Mount Calvary up in the peace spot. And l- let me just speak on that because that's actually a really good topic. I think that. One of the things I really tried to do from the jump was create this create this space where it would be socially acceptable. So I've never been a stripper. I've never been a, a pole dancer, anything like that. I'm a regular everyday woman who has that element to her and who had that interest in that. And so because I come from it from that perspective, I always try to relate from that perspective. I always try to give women an equal dose of sex appeal, but also class. And they, and because I'm a trainer and because I really take pride in my trade, I've always made it about fitness. So yeah, we're doing this sexy move. Yeah, you letting your hair down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm kicking your ass. Like you're, you're coming out of here sweating, working muscles you never uh, worked before, hearing fitness terminology that you didn't think you were going to get in a pole class. And I think that's what gave the peace spot the sustenance that it had. It wasn't just this drop in place where you could have a one off bachelorette party or a one off like uh, swing on a pole. It wasn't like that. People came to the peace spot because it was their gym. They came. It was a part of their lifestyle. We offered several classes of all di- like pole, chair, we did some floor classes, all of that. And people would frequent that place as if they would come to a gym. And I think that that was the biggest, that was the b- biggest thing, like 
business wise for me to expand that money, but also just from a branding um, perspective, it made us stand out amongst the rest. So, yeah. So I say that to say it was a safe place for churchgoers. It was a safe place. We used to have people from the White House. We, we have people all else. I mean, I used to do bachelorette parties. We had like these real starch, conservative, Southern Baptist groups that would come in and they'd be like, yeah, you know, it was a safe and honest place for people of all else to like do something fun and rejuvenating together. So yeah, there was a lot of your people's up in there. <laughs> now, I think this is a very fascinating subject. So I kind of want to stay on it just a little longer and you kind of, dove into another question that I had. Now, I've been, and you guys, Michaela is awesome. I mean, if you haven't figured it out by now. Um, she's all delivery. It, in person, it's the same delivery when you're in a class. It's the same delivery, right? I've been in your class, and I've been on the pole. And <laughs> I kind of wanted you to speak to uh, the, 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 that, Speak to the idea of men and women partaking in pole fitness classes. Like, what is your perspective on it? Uh, how do you promote or push that idea? Do you think it's a good idea? What do you think on it? What are your thoughts? That is so interesting. Thank you for that question. That's so interesting. So when I started the Peace Spot, I mean, the entire time the Peace Spot was open, it was a women's only facility as much as it could be. And again, we didn't we never really got caught in the whole like gender role thing, like people who didn't identify and stuff like that. But what the, the culture we tried to create there is like, we didn't want people just signing up to sit and watch. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to like negate the sleazos. And so just, we just was like, this is a women's fitness facility. And again, that went a long way to create that space where people could feel safe. And also I wasn't really trying to manage all of that. I'm, like, I could have opened it up to, I mean, I could have opened it up to people of all different types, but I just didn't want to have that one incident where someone's like, I'm not coming in here looking at anybody, and then they come and they're looking at somebody. <laughs> and it's funny, because even in a women's only studio, you could have that same situation happen. Okay, so that that was at the peace spot. At the gym that we hosted at now, Again, it's a free for all. It's people of all different sexualities, genders, fitness backgrounds. And it's actually offered some new perspective on the whole thing because, again, I have been used to dealing with only like women. And now, like the same move, it's totally different on a man. Why? Because y'all got pieces we don't got. <laughs> and we got pieces you don't got. So it's funny. I'm like telling Chris, or I'm telling you, like, do this move. And Chris is like, ouch. And I'm like, what you mean, ouch? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that move. <laughs> that move works differently on you. So it's, it's been a real growth opportunity for me to have um, males in the class. And it's been so fun. I think, I don't know. I don't know why I associate going hard with men. I shouldn't because I'm a woman that goes hard. And I have tons of female clients that go hard. But there's something in me that when a male is in my class, I feel like I have to take it up a notch. And especially if it's a, a, a frequent, like, gym yeah. going in that, like, it's that time to do. Huh? You do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, if you, when you come to my class, I'm like, no. Like, you Okay, so the biggest thing is, like, you're never going to walk out of my class and be like, it was easy. You'll never do that with me. So I feel like someone who was an avid gym goer, and I, I said it's male, but it's really, if a, if a woman came into my class looking all buff, looking like she got this, I think I would have that same competitive spirit. But definitely, like, when the male trainers come, I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm going to make them understand that this is not some little gimmicky class that they could just come in here and make fun of. No, nah, we going to climb some ropes today. So, like, literally, when the guys come, I'm like, up and down this hole eight times. All right? Once I clear your brain of that notion that this is easy, now we can break it down to other things. So, that's that's how it's changed my um kind of like approach to it it's helped me like really expand my knowledge base about certain moves and certain like capabilities that people have on the pole but it's also it's given me another level of like beast mode where i like i can take it up a notch which is it's really rewarding to, to be i've been doing this for 14 years 
And after 14 years to still be growing and understanding, you know, what you do in a different way is, is so awesome. But I love when the guys come. I love it. <laughs> it's always interesting to see the guys do it. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Eddie joined on here, but Eddie's one who gets in and goes all the way. You know, Chris, Chris just joined, and Chris is in my class every week. Oh yeah, I mean Chris. Is, That's Chris. Yeah. Chris, Chris be on there showing off, and and the thing with Chris is, I, I always say. I'm going to have to go in there just to, you know, just to let him know, you know, a little something. You have a long way to go, boo. He got like four or five, six months on you. You you, you going to you gonna have to come and respect. You going to have to respect the king, okay? But, but listen, Chris, no, I'm, I'm down for a challenge. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so pole dancing is definitely something or pole, you know, pole fitness is definitely um, a very interesting thing. Now, I did want to, there was a question that came up, not on here, but there's a question that I've gotten a lot of times. And people want to know, what's the difference between, like, your bar, your yogas, you know, all of the various soft type of, I wouldn't say soft, because they're not really soft, depending on, you know, what you're actually doing and, and, and who's instructing and whatnot. But, but like, what are the differences and and how do you like or how would you recommend so you, you're talking about the inner fitness format so that's bar that's pilates that's yoga and even within yoga you have like the yeah. yasa rhythm Men yoga all of that um so baseline difference um bar is um it's a format that is based off of ballet and use of a ballet bar that's it at its core. So it's a fitness workout. And I actually probably take it to the extreme and like almost every movement, every track has some type of interaction with the bar and it utilizes ballet terms and things like that. So think about taking, everybody knows like what a plie is. A plie is like heels together, knees out, looks like a squat. And it's how you can remix that type of move and make it a physical challenge. That's what bar is. Pilates is similar, but it is, well, it's typically mat based. It doesn't always have to be. And it's pretty much um, focused on the core. It's how can I use my body position and uh, namely core and glutes? How do I keep my core engaged while going through rigorous either sequences or still poses and so again it's supposed to be low impact and low external load which means your body is the heaviest weight that you are lifting or resisting against it's not something where you would add barbells and things like that so everyone knows a plank even though a plank can go can be seen in any class that is a typical pilates move um everyone knows a bridge where you're laying on your back and your hips are up that's all those core engaged focused moves. That's where, what you're going to see in Pilates. Um, they do use equipment in Pilates. It's mostly like exercise balls and bands and things like that. Um, yoga, again, there's several different flows and practices of yoga. Uh, but yoga is about synergy between breath, mind, body and flow in most cases and you have different degrees of that you have different paces of that but it's bridging that um bridging that gap between the inner and the outer you and making that flow so as far as how to utilize them um first of all anytime you're doing any type of fitness class i would say pick the class you like like don't just go to a class because you think it's a box you're supposed to check like up until recently, I've had no interest in yoga. I'm just going to keep it real. I love okay. yogis. I love yoga instructors. I even like the concept of yoga. But up until recently, I was like, yoga ain't my thing. And I don't feel guilty about it. It's cool. So I wouldn't just sign up for a yoga class just to be like, I'm supposed to do yoga. So you want to familiarize yourself with those classes or any classes. And if it kind of fits who you are, then do it. And then it should all be a part of like a regimen. So you should have a clear understanding. Talk to a trainer like Everett. Talk to a trainer and get an understanding of what you're trying to get out of your week or what you're trying to get out of the next few months. And so if over the course of time, you're trying to add a little bulk to your arms and you're trying to add a little slimming to your legs, you may find that 
loading up on classes like yoga, bar and Pilates might help that, right? Because you're doing a lot of arm work and you're doing a lot of low impact, low, uh, lower body work. But if you're trying to add bulk, like let's say you're training for a bodybuilding competition, of course, these are not the classes for it. So that's what, if you're just doing this for fun though, like if you don't care about weight, you don't care about body composition, just do the one you like or find the instructor that you like. And chances are, if you like an instructor, regardless of what he or she teaches, you're going to like it. So like I teach every single class really except for yoga. And I have people that never thought they would like bar. And then they tried my bar class because they know me and they're like, oh, I like it. So, again, that was a roundabout way of answering that. But um, those classes can be used together as a part of a regimen, but you still should have a clear indication of like what you're working toward in order to use them the right way. Mm -hmm. You've been to what my bar class, right? I've been to bar and I was, I was going to say, I've been to your bar. I've been to a couple of the bar classes and what's always interesting and fascinating to me because I'm big on heavy lifting. Right. And I remember <laughs> it was an instructor at another gym and she was the one who first introduced the whole idea of me as a male going to a yoga class. And I was like, oh, no, nah, you know, I don't need to stretch because at, <laughs> you know, at that point in time, I'm all about muscles. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not doing anything to sabotage that. And she was yeah. like, well, you know, the bigger the muscles, the more important it is for you to actually get in. And I actually never took her up on her offer at that time. And um and then I went on, but I knew at that point in time, I started saying, you know what? Maybe it's not such a bad idea. So, so then I became open to it. And um, when I started taking bar, the interesting thing is, is uh, shortly before I started taking bar, I was playing football. Now, I'm a big football fanatic, right? I'm a big football fanatic. Um, love watching football. We're not Who's your team? Who's your team? I was just about to say, we're not going there. You already Who's your team, son? Going there right here on air, Michaela. We we not going because I already know. I know who your team is, and I'm not gonna go there. Okay, I'm not gonna go there. Um, My team has won two championships since your team. I just wanna put that out there. But anyway, go ahead. We digress. We digress. I'm sorry. I know you always give you so many compliments, but I can't let no Dallas Cowboys fan be coming for the Giants. I just can't. Because she had to say that. I'm not going to rub in the fact that we got five and we'll probably get a six when this come up. That was way before you was even born. Listen. That was way before you was even born. Come on, son. Michaela, come on. <laughs> we, we didn't have to go there, Michaela. We, I know. Let's get back to, to loving each other. Okay, go back. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so I would play flag football. And now, a lot of times when you go out on flag football, you, a lot of the leagues are not necessarily competitive, right? People are there for social reasons, but because I'm super competitive and because I love football, I'm going in and I'm going hard. So I would play and I'm yeah. going hard. But then I noticed I would take, I remember I took the first time I took bar, I took it in the morning and then mm -hmm. I had uh, I had a game later that day and mm -hmm. my best game ever, you know, because mm -hmm. it's something about being able to take the attention off of like the bulk and the, and the heavy building stuff, the stuff that really tears your body down and then uh, shifting gears and doing like more of the body weight, you know, more of the lightweight where you're really focused on just contractions and, and, and volume and, and just loading in and loading out. So um, as far as increasing functionality for me, it, it's, it's wonderful because it really, uh, the, you know, the bar class really allows you to focus because I am a core. Um, I'm a core person who focuses on core. It allows you to really focus on your core in a way that you uh, don't otherwise do it, you know, because of the fact that you are now slowing things down. You're not worried about dropping a weight on your head. You can really now focus on the engagement of the core. So for guys that are, you know, looking for a different modality, a different way um, to, to work on conditioning, to improve functionality, that's definitely the way to go. And, I mean, you nailed it. I, I liken it to, you know, building a brick house on top of weak beams or weak foundation, right? It looks sturdy from the outside because you're seeing the brick. But that brick is heavy. It's going to crush that weak foundation. It's going to sink. 
what it is is that that's what happens a lot of times. We don't build up the inner muscles that are designed to give you stamina and give you endurance and to keep you going for a long time. We just load on the heavy muscles that are more short term and more instant gratification on top of the muscles that meet the foundation. And so that's, again, people live in this sort of like instant gratification type society where they just want to look good. And who cares if they really are good? They want to look good. They want to floss and things like that. So... Uh, thank you, Tarsa. So, yeah, so that's what it's about. But then we end up with injuries and we end up with random tears. And then we have to pay extra money to go to a physical therapist and go to a doctor. When all you had to do was give your fitness regimen some variety. All you had to do is take one, two, three days where you're not bulking up and you go into something more low impact and more focused on your foundation. So, yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay. And that and that that speaks to a uh, that is one thing at the age of you know I'm 36 now I'm about to be 37. And hey, hey. 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 <laughs> one of the biggest lessons and transitions over the last couple of years is just the importance of the balance of of adding in stretching because I like I said you know there was a point in time back in I believe when I was doing early early in my uh, show. Uh, career, I was getting massages, regular massages, and mm -hmm. what kind of massages? Full body massages. <laughs> Look, we came on serious today. You know, I had to add your skin to it. We came on real serious and business like today. <laughs> full body massages, the best massages, where you know, <laughs> and the thing about it is. While that was going on, that's when I was like my, my most flexible. That's when I was the most limber. That's when I was the loosest. And then I stopped, you know, uh, some things changed and then it just kind of fell off. And um, but there's been a recommitment, a recommitment to stretching to replace that um, and using like manual massage, because as we you know, as we get older, I'm trying to tell you, listen, as we get older, that functionality starts to try to creep out of there. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's one of those things that, you know, people have, people wonder why they may struggle to, to get in shape or to lose weight or to be, it's because mentally you're going to go towards what you always know. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's imperative if you're trying to make a change, which is why it's imperative for you to stick, find something that you can stick to for the long term. Because yeah. You, you, you know, you start on these little 90 day plans and these, you know, I'm going to make a transformation in, in eight weeks and whatnot. You're, you can see some results, but that hypo hypothalamus and that that mental uh, programming is going to always revert back mm -hmm. to what it knows. And it doesn't matter whether you are at 60 plus pounds, underweight, overweight. Your, your mentals will do that. And so that's why it's always important to engage in something sustainable. You know, it's, it's not about the quick fixes. I like to call them, I like to call them get fit quick schemes because <laughs> you this promise, right, of, of you getting fit in X amount of time. It's cool if you're going to use that to get started. Yeah. It's always about the end game. It's like playing a game like that. You're looking mm -hmm. for two ahead. I used to tell people, damn, you spent all those thousands of dollars on this, this, and that. You could have gave me that. And I would have, I would have, I would have learned you something. <laughs> you had to pay to get this surgery and buy these pills. You could have, you could have bought this surgery and this pill right here. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I mean, but that's, again, it, it feels harder on the brain to be able to go through that rigor and that hard work. And people don't understand that you're going to pay either way. I, I used to do um, nutrition counseling. Um, I, I just call them like nutrition coaching sessions at Whole Foods where I would take clients from the P-Spot into Whole Foods because that's where I shop. I don't have any, you know, they're not making any money off of this and I'm not making any money off of plugging them, but that's where I shop. And I would show people how to shop there, how to label read, things like that, right? And the most common thing that I would hear is, oh, whole paycheck. Oh, it's so expensive. Oh, da, da, da. So what I make them do, I make them do a budget sheet where they looked at their expenses on average over the course of the month. And I had them calculate how much they spent on food. And this would include groceries, eating out, um, any health.
health related pills, like high blood pressure, stuff like that, and have them calculate that over the month. And then we go into the store and we, you know, do a, a normal shopping trip. They look at that expensive receipt, multiply it by four and notice that actually over the course of the month, they were spending way more eating out and, you know, buying pills, going to the doctor and all of that. And it, it lends to that same concept that you're talking about. On paper, in the moment, it feels big. It feels rigorous. It feels hard. But if you look at this thing as a marathon, you already spending more. You already doing too much. You could scale it back, take that L on the here and now, and long term, actually be doing way better. So it's it's the same thing with fitness, for sure. Yeah. All right. I have a question for you. And right. again. You came in straight off. First of all, I love that you are so business minded and all of that. and so upsetting. But, you know, it's Friday. It's about nine something. I got to throw a little ratchet in here. So we talked. <laughs> this sparked my this sparked my attention because you were like, you know, I used to go to church right across the street from the peace spot. And so I want to know, would you ever date a former pole dancer? and or stripper would you have you you go wherever you want with that and why or why not you said what why or why not this could qualify as our last question or our live questions <laughs> we've been we've been we've been begging the exercise questions we need some living laughs, laughs. Well, first first of all um i it, it's so interesting to take this question you can take it in many different ways. Um, now, I will say this, that I have nothing against someone who is doing it, whether it's professionally, personally, whatever. If that's your thing, right? If that's your thing, okay. If I um, were to, have, you know, to meet somebody and that was their thing, I mean then it's just their thing. I'm not opposed to it. The, 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 the challenge would be, I believe, the challenge would be trying to understand, I guess, what the person's real motives were for doing it, right? Because I, I think it could be interruptive to a relationship if you're, into, if you're in a relationship with somebody who needs and thrives on attention from mm -hmm. anybody. That is where I believe there could be an interruption or an issue, because yeah. I believe we all we all need affirmations of some kind, right? We all need somebody in our corner. We all need that. But yeah. if, and you get out there and uh, like I remember, I was I used to date. I remember I dated <laughs> this girl, this woman, <laughs> and she was a complete club head. Like she, I mean, every every time she could. She was into the clubs. Now, I'm not going to say I'm not into the clubs. I'm not going to say I don't like music. But truth be told, regardless of the color of my skin, I'm not a dancer. OK, so a club is not my favorite. It's not my favorite space to be because I can't dance. OK, I, I don't you know, I'm, you can't dance? I, don't, I don't recall that. Well, well, listen, listen, Hold on, let, let me qualify that. Let me, let me OK. Qualify. Because I'm thinking the last time I like we actually danced was like I shut this birthday party. And I feel like, maybe, okay. I mean, we were drinking, but I feel like you were good. Okay, okay, watch this. So watch this, watch this. So here's the thing. I have rhythm, right? I have rhythm. Uh, you know, I'm a musician. I play the piano, so I have rhythm. But I do not, when you talk about moving your two feet together, <laughs> I was on... I, <laughs> I was on stage one time and I was doing, we were doing a play and a director came and he was like, hey, I want you to be in this play. And it was like a musical. And I said, well, sounds good, but I don't dance. He's like, oh, no, nah, man, you, you know, I said, no, for real, I don't dance. He didn't, he didn't believe me. I said, no, but if you get me a choreographer, because one thing I believe is dance can be taught, right? I said, listen, I'm athletic. I have rhythm. Let's just learn how to do it. And, um, and so, got a choreographer. We went through this whole production. Um, and so I'm literally on stage doing, I, I need to see if I can find that video now, but I'm literally on stage doing things I never thought I could do before. I'm dancing in an ensemble. I'm like moving back and forth across. I don't know how good it was, but I was in sync, right? So, but here's the thing. Um, 
it required a lot of choreography, right? It required <laughs> to, to like focus and, and, and look in and, and figure. So that's why I'm always fascinated by people that can dance. Like I'm, I'm like yeah. completely fascinated. But to answer the question, I would. It's not off the table, but it, it, you know, it's not a. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be a deal breaker. I think it's a little different for men and women because I think. First of all, I don't like. Okay. I don't want to offend anyone because I got a couple of friends. I don't particularly enjoy male dancers. Okay. That's just my thing. I don't like men doing this. I don't like that. It's just not my thing. So. Funny you say that about that. Huh? It's, it's funny you say that. I got something about that, but you can keep Yeah, like when, when I got married and I had a bachelor, I was like, no male strippers. Like, don't even do it. Like, I'd rather go, I'd rather see a female stripper. Like, don't do it. So I think it's a little different. And I also think that plays into a lot of gender kind of bias where, you know, a woman who is a stripper or a pole dancer is seen, you know, called a hoe and a man who's doing it is, you know, not. Um, but I think that when it comes down to it, I don't even think that I would want to date a male dancer just because I have this thing about me. It's like an exclusivity thing. And I know everyone's been with other people before they meet you, and you want that. But I'm like not even one of those people that like to date two people in the same circle or two people in the same team or like if you know each other. Because I'm not trying to, or like, let me just flip it. I don't even want to date somebody who done remotely dated somebody that I could know, right? It's this exclusivity thing. I don't need people in my business. I don't need people knowing how my man look when he's in the bed or when he's jiggling. I don't want her to know that. So being that I'm like that, if you date a male dancer, you got a whole bunch of chicks that know how your man look or your woman or whatever in sexy positions. And I don't like it. I have like an exclusivity, you know, clause. Like, no, you only look that way and do that with me. That's it. <laughs> so I think that would be my thing. But I definitely do think it's different for women and men. And I think that a lot of times it probably is a struggle for dancers because no matter which angle they're coming at it with, because women are automatically deep, loose, a hoe, um, you know, not smart and all that if they choose to dance. I don't think men have quite that stigma. Well, you, I mean, you might you might be right in all of that, um, but hey, Tammy, sorry, Tammy just joined. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean, you might be right in all of that. I, um, I mean, I, I myself have been, you know, propositioned a few times, you know, to dance, to to jump on that, to jump on that team, yeah. But, yeah. I think I propositioned you. Me and Tammy propositioned you to be a part of the Magic no. Mike crew. Yeah, and you were ready and willing. We were like, for those of you who don't know this, I can talk about it now because it's not traumatic to Tammy anymore. Tammy was traumatized. All right, so we, when I first started working where I work, we had this bright idea to do some little event where some of our real fine personal trainers would reenact Magic Mike. And I was the choreographer. Tammy was the GM. She was managing this whole thing. She was the road manager. We had Everett. We had Ed. We had Kevin D. Michelle. We had George Cruz. Fine trainers. And they was up there. We were, we were rolling. Then the company shut down. They were like, hell to not. And Tammy was devastated. <laughs> and, but anyway, the whole story is that Everett was in there doing his Magic Mike shirt off, doing all of this. Yeah. No, no. I, I, that was Ed. Remember, because remember, because I you was I, in it too. No, no, I came, but I backed out because I was like, nah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, because we started with five, and then which I don't, I don't know if you backed out before we got shut down. <laughs> Sammy is cracking up. No, I definitely backed out. No, I definitely backed out because I you didn't back out to my face. You didn't back out to my face. I don't no. seem to remember you backing out. Because, because, no, because I remember Ed on a couple of occasions was like, yo, ever, you know, you're going to come, we're going to make, and I was like, bro, I don't, because remember, Ed. We only had one practice. We only had one practice. So you was there for the one practice. No. That means you was part of Magic Mike. Oh, yeah, no, I was there for the practice, but that's what I'm saying. I was there for the practice, and I was like, nah, Ed, I don't think I can rock. 
<laughs> it was like, come on, man. It was like, come on, boy. All you gotta do. I was like, nah, nah. Uh, right up, right up as Adam, man. No, it was so fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Um, but no. So anyway, all right. So it's not a deal breaker for you. If um, let me ask this. Let me ask this question in a different way. So let's say you had okay. Would it be a difference if you had met someone, got to know her, didn't know she had stripped or danced or is, right? And then after you really got to like her as a person, you learned that, that's one scenario versus somebody you just meet. Let's say you get set up on a blind date or you just date somebody first time. And off that first date, they tell you, yeah, I'm a dancer. Or, yeah, I used to dance. Is there a difference in how you would flow with them or does does it really not matter? Um. I don't, I don't think that really ma- Like, I don't think that really matters in, in the grand scheme of it because I think, I think that the biggest thing is going to be, you know, how, it's going to be, of course, obviously how we get along, but it's going to be what impression do I get of her? Like, like, like throughout the course of that, whatever that relationship is, do, does it like, like when you say. If I don't find out for months later, is that is me finding out an affirmation of like, ah, no wonder you've been like, like, no wonder you're distant or no wonder you seem to have a yeah. lot of attention. Yeah. Or if it's one of those types of things, then maybe I reconcile it and be like, ah, this is not something maybe I want to be a part of, depending on how you know far along we are. But yeah, but you know, I just if if it's something that's up front, like I said, if it's up front, I'm. I'm it's one of those things where it's like we all have our our thing, like you know, we all have our bag <laughs> thing, or or that thing that we do or have done in the past. So, and it, yeah. and, it and it all makes us who we are now. This it's, is true. Thank thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. I appreciate. <laughs> that. So we have about twelve minutes left. I, I got a couple. I had I had a whole bunch of random people write me silly stuff. I sent out a poll for people to submit their questions, and you wouldn't believe some of the DMs I got. I should I shouldn't even open myself up to that. But uh, one of the serious, <laughs> like, come on, son. Uh, one of the serious ones that I got was from Arena, um, and Arena wanted to ask both of us: um, Is it annoying to be in a relationship and have to pretty much? nag or push your partner to work out like have you ever been in that situation and what like what does that feel like um to ha- and i guess what she's asking is and we, we touched on this last week was like if your fitness drive is not at not at the same level as your partner's does that create a divide in your relationship so uh do you want to take it first or do you want me to take it first i already let my state, my, my okay. thoughts be known, which is okay. don't make me have to tell you. <laughs> That's what it is. Right, don't that. make me have to tell you. Uh, fit, fit, fitness drive and um, taking care of your body and body image for all of the reasons that we discussed last week is very important to me. It's more important to me today as an almost 40-year-old than it was as a 20-year-old. And I I think that a person who I'm going to be in a long-term relationship with has to have some type of drive to take care of their body and to have a certain physique. That's just me. It may sound superficial, but I don't make any excuses for my wants and my needs these days. So that's me. (laughs) Yeah, no. um, My my answer is... um, Gosh, it um, it has definitely played a role in in previous relationships. But here, here here's my thing: I somebody who is in fitness, regardless of what their actual result is, if they are going to the gym, if they are conscious about the foods that they eat, that's more attractive than um, whether or not you're a certain size, if that makes any sense, right? You so, still gotta look at them naked. You're saying that it doesn't matter. You still gotta no, look I'm at not. them naked. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I'm not saying you should, it should matter. Yeah. I'm just no, making no, sure no. you're clear. No, I'm <laughs> is going to obviously go for a certain type or, or, or a certain, you know, a certain boom, 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 bam, right? But <laughs> here's the thing, is that what I noticed that people who are into fitness, they have so, and this is really what it's about, 
They ha- and this is why the weight doesn't matter. It's because the, per- the person who's in fitness has so many other positive attributes that are related to it. Like you can't be, you can't go hard in fitness and not go hard in some of your other endeavors, whether it be in your career, whether it be in your, you know, uh, uh, business projects, all those sorts of things. Because the discipline that it takes and the focus that it takes to achieve certain milestones in fitness. It spills over. Not only that, you're going to carry yourself differently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be, maybe I shouldn't say, but I'll say, I don't want to be with somebody. And this kind of goes away. But I don't want to be with somebody if when we go out, I'm looking, I'm looking a little more flyer because I'm a little more fitter because I'm more conscious of what I'm putting out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to feel like we're on... I really want to feel like you're just, you know, way smoking hotter, that sort of thing. But, you know, that people who are who are striving to be fit, they have a different set of values and how they approach things. And that's what is attractive to me, because it it speaks to your level of power. That's awesome. And I I just want to I just want to make it clear that like. I, we're not body shaming at all. Um, I think the point that we're trying to get at is that ultimately for a relationship to work, there has to be some like equilibrium and some really important ways. And I think that something that I realized today that I didn't realize before was that for me, a part of that equality that I need with a mate is like their fitness and their drive. And for me, it matters a lot because that's my profession. That's my life. That's my livelihood. That's what I'm passionate about. And so if I am not on the same page with the person I'm in a relationship with on that level, then that cuts out a huge part of who I am. And that's really what it is. For, for every for, for each his own. For some people, fitness is not that serious them. And I think that they could be with someone who fitness isn't that serious because that's where they are. But for a person like me that's so deeply invested, vested in fitness, it matters a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. And, and you said something that's key, and that is the passion part. Like, if I wasn't passionate about fitness, listen, even with me being passionate about fitness, I still don't have this thing where you have to be a certain weight and a certain. No, I, I don't feel that way. Um, but when you talk about being passionate about it, it's almost like, how can I be passionate? It's almost like somebody who's, let's say, passionate about politics, right? You can't have a deep, deep relationship with somebody and you're passionate about politics. If, Like, how are you going to bounce ideas off this person? How are you guys going to bounce exactly. with something's in the news cycle because this person is aloof and has no... Then that just opens the door for you to be putting emotional energy elsewhere with somebody you can connect with. So because it's a passion... <laughs> We have to share that. You just made me think of something really important. I know we're running short on time. We have about six minutes. But, like, even worse than somebody who doesn't care about the things you care about, even worse than that is somebody who fakes like they care about the stuff that you care about. And, and that politics thing just came up because I'm a politics junkie. I was a poli sci major in college. When I come in the house, the first channel I turn on is MSNBC. Like, I'm always in political. So even worse than someone who's not into that is someone who's trying to be into that, either to please you or to make themselves feel better. And then you're having a stupid conversation. And you're talking to somebody who don't know what the hell they're talking about. And I think it would really equate to fitness as well. Someone who's faking a funk, acting like, you know, hitting the gym, trying to sweat it out, and then coming home and eating Cheetos. Like, that's worse to me than somebody that is comfortable in their own skin. Like, look, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. And I don't know why what you said just sparked that to me. Like, sparked that in my head. Like, yeah. 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 Now, and then, now, I did want to piggyback on something you said, because I don't want people out here to think that, oh my gosh, you just, you you know, you can never eat Cheetos or, or chips or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're not... We're not saying that, but the the big picture of what you're saying is that whole thing of somebody who's like putting on that facade, which it's cool if you're in the fitness, like I want you to be in fitness, but if it's just a, if it's not genuine, it it comes out. Like, like 
out. You know, and when it comes out, then it then it causes a lot more issue than if it had just been that way up front. If it had just been mm -hmm. up front, you're not really into it. You just go once or twice just to do it. Okay, as opposed to, oh, I'm gonna come in. I know I'm what I want. He's in there every day, so let me go in three, four days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm fine. It becomes an issue. Oh, well, why are you in the gym so long, boo? Oh, babe, mm -hmm. you know, so many hours. And then it comes out, you're not really into it like that. You just did it for whatever you were trying to accomplish. Yeah, the fakeness. We need to address that first next week. Fakeness. Um, so we have a, only a few minutes left. I think we covered every checkpoint. I think we covered living and lifestyle. You definitely made me laugh a few times. I feel like I made you laugh a few times. I'm just going to scroll and see if we missed any questions. Um, uh, did we miss any questions? If we missed questions, type in. So I guess my parting thing would be a funny, a funny uh, story. Let's tell a funny story. Quickly, in about a minute, tell me about the worst date you ever had. The worst, and say, the worst. The worst date you ever had. What was it? You got a minute. What was it? Why was it the worst? Jeez, the worst date. Oh gosh, you got me going, going back. Um, the worst date. You know, you gotta come back to me, okay? I got to. I, I'm trying so, to. It was recent, and we, we took part in this together. <laughs> so for fun, Everett, a few of our friends, and me went on this speed thing. Like, it's a bucket list item for me. I just always wondered how this thing worked. Like, how did this even uh, work? So Everett, some friends, and us, we like tag team a speed day and thing. And when I tell you, baby, that it was so depressing. And I was like, no, this is why I'll never all my date. This is why I'll never speed date. This is why I'm going to just keep it all traditional. And I'm going to meet somebody in the grocery store. It was horrible speed dating in D.C. Well, well I, I knew it was going to be horrible. I knew it was gonna be horrible when I when I saw the, the the caliber of guys that were lining up in there for you. I was like, dang, Michaela. I said, like, I'm I'm glad we in this thing together. So I, was there, I was in there having fun because I wasn't in there trying to make. I saw the people who actually came with high hopes, high hopes trying to find a man. I was in there I know. laughing. I was like taking notes and really trying to get to know people because that joint was funny. <laughs> I was uh, I was uh, talking to one person, and the, I remember the first person I talked to. She was um, it was it was cool. I was like, oh, this is this is gonna be real positive, whatever. She's you know friendly. This should be an enjoyable event. Not that I was even necessarily looking to walk away with somebody or anything like that. Just you know a, a cool, cordial person. And I got to the second table. This is. I, this, this was the funniest part, I guess. I get to the second table, and this woman, I never forget, she's from Bangladesh, right? Now, she had to have been in her 40s or something like that. Don't have a problem with it. What I have a problem with is that I sit there, and from the moment I sat there, she looked at me as if I was the most disgusting piece of vermin that she had ever seen in her life. And she looked like she couldn't be any more pissed that I was the guy sitting across from her. And first of all, first of all, uh, Chick, we're only here for five minutes, okay? Suck it up and let's have a conversation. But here's the, here's the kicker part. She Talking, there's this there's this hovering of bad odor coming from her mouth. When I say her breath was the worst, it was the absolute worst breath I've ever smelled in the entirety of human of humankind. And she had the nerve, and she had the nerve to look at me as if I'm just the scum on the bottom of her shoe. And because I'm the polite guy that I am, I said, you know what? I'm just going to practice breathing out when she talks and breathing in when she breathes in because it was too much. So, yeah. And, but then, so you better than me because, again, I told you I wasn't even going in there trying to meet nobody. I was there having a good old fun time checking something off my bucket list. So this one guy trying to come and be sarcastic and be silly. And I could, 
You did me when I got up and I left that guy right at the damn table. I was like, fuck, I don't know who you're talking to. I'm not going to go sit here and entertain no foolishness. But anyway, we have 20 seconds left. <laughs> Eric, you are so, you are my MVP tonight. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I want to thank all of our viewers, the ones that jumped in and jumped out. Thank you for living, laughing, and exercising with us. We'll see you this time next week at 8.30. Bye, guys.